Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second installment in the workshop webinar series. I am your host, Lucas Drega, Solution Specialist here at AgilePoint, and thank you so much for joining me today. We have a great agenda and webinar planned for you today, but let's give your colleagues another moment or so to dial in before we go ahead and get started. All right, thank you for your patience, everyone. And for those of you who have just joined us, welcome to the second installment of the workshop webinar series. As we mentioned earlier, we have a great agenda for you today and are really excited to present to you how AgilePoint can help transform your organization by attacking this application middle ground. Now, for those of you who are just joining us for, the, for this installment in the series, it's great to have you. You did miss a great bit of content in the last installment. I mean, just for reference's sake, in the last installment in this series, we focused on tackling these small applications. These are the sorts of transactional, occasionally data-driven or mobile applications that can help make work easier in certain segments of your user community. Now we're going to be expanding on that concept today and showing you how we can easily build applications that automate work across silos avoid the dreaded islands of low code, so to speak, and drive towards one of the primary areas of focus for most of the organizations that we're speaking to today, the area of customer experience. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, for those of you who follow along with industry press and things of that nature, you've probably noticed that the common theme is that digital transformation is in rough shape for most organizations. Now, surely there's a number of reasons for that, but let's talk about one of the primary reasons. Right, and that comes down to the fact that there's really two different types or major categories of applications that lots of organizations are building. On the one hand, we have the traditional BPM style workloads, right? the core complex business applications that are central to how an organization generates revenue or how they organize their back office. Now these applications tend to be smaller in number due to their complexity and is the target of IT departments and many, many legacy BPM tools. On the other hand, we have the smaller applications and this was the focus of the first installment in this series. These applications might be form or database driven they might be mobile applications, right? And as a result, they are smaller and generally less complex. Now, this might be one way to extend some of the SaaS that you're using today, right? And generally fill in the gaps between the existing software offerings that you're leveraging. As a result, these tend to be much higher in number in hundreds and sometimes in the thousands. The main issue being, and this was the central focus of the last session, was that many of these smaller apps will remain on the IT backlog simply because they are not strategic enough to warrant IT's attention. Now on the other side of the coin here, we have this missing middle ground, right? And this is really what AgilePoint will focus on for today. This is an emerging category that you might have heard referenced as digital process automation, right? In contrast to the core complex business applications these are not simply internally facing. These might go and interact with customers and partners and bring them closer to your business processes. This is really going to be the focus of today's conversation. 
Now, while we'll touch on this concept today throughout the course of the webinar, there are a few additional resources that I'd highly recommend you take a look into. Uh, for one would be a summary of Agile Point's leader positioning in this prestigious and emerging category of digital process automation for wide deployment, as well as a couple of great case studies. The first coming from a Fortune 10 global retailer and how Agile Point has been instrumental in the modernization of their enterprise tax processes, as well as how professional and citizen developers are working side by side to tackle simple to complex, internal and externally facing application development needs. Now that we have a good understanding of the different types of applications that vary in scope and complexity, I did want to spend a few moments to and speak to how Agile Point can help avoid this emerging issue of islands of low code. Some of the other providers that you might be familiar with have focus in some areas that you're seeing here on screen. Some have really great database application tooling, while others, the legacy BPM providers, have made their focus on the core BPM style workloads. Now, certainly there are a number of differentiators from an Agile Point perspective, but just one of them is this very wide coverage, right? From a single platform, Agile Point is able to deliver applications of varying scope and complexities, which means that you as a user need to develop skills with one particular platform and can avoid having this disjointed islands of low code strategy that we see so often these days. Now the intent here with our series is to first start off with the small applications. As we mentioned, this was the focus of the last installment in this webinar. In the next series here, we'll be focusing on this middle ground, right? So this is going to build on some of the capabilities that we saw last time around. Namely, how we can build intuitive, responsive user interface forms that leverage the data from all of the systems that you're using today. In this installment, we'll talk about how we can continue to build these skills, right? Moving from the smaller applications and adding things like process, email notifications, and begin to attack this process middle ground. And in the next installment in the series, we'll focus on the core complex business applications, right? And that's really one of the unique values of Agile Point, right? Giving this very broad coverage across the, the different sorts of application categories, a user can build their skills with small applications and slowly work towards more complex and more strategic enterprise-wide applications. So be on the lookout for the next installment in this series. Now, before we get into the build from scratch, let's just quickly cover off the different application types that you can build with Agile Point. When Agile Point was developed, the intent here was to be able to provide a platform that's versatile enough to address these different categories and enable users to build skills against one platform and deliver a wide range of different application types. Right, this concept is really well validated in Agile Point's positioning across a variety of industry analyst reports from general purpose low code, where we might replace Java or C sharp based development, Gartner's IBPM Magic Quadrant, as well as the emerging category of digital process automation. So, from a single, very versatile Agile Point platform, not only can I build simple and complex applications, but also the various categories that you're seeing here on screen. The focus of today's conversation is going to be around process driven applications that enforce our internal standards, that bring our partners, our customers, and our suppliers closer to our business and our business processes. The small form based applications that we talked about last time around. Creating custom branded native mobile applications in any sort of store that carry your organization's branding. And of course, everything that you build from an Agile Point standpoint is going to be ready for the cloud. So as soon as you're ready to take advantage of the economics of the cloud, all of your applications will move from your on-premises data center to the cloud provider of your choice with zero refactoring and zero rebuilding. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, today we'll build a simple invoice application. 
And before we start building, let's take a look at the various application components. We'll build a process to submit and review new orders and create an invoice. To do that, we'll leverage AgilePoint's native document generation capabilities to insert data from our application into an existing template, and we'll store that invoice in SharePoint. On the form side, we'll pull in data about our customers from our CRM system. We'll look up the products that we sell from a SharePoint list, and then we'll do some calculation on the form for our invoice amount. And in, if the invoice is approved, we'll send out an email notification to the accounting team to let them know the invoice can be sent to the customer. All right, so let's start building. Now today we're going to focus around process-based applications. If you'd like to learn more about the form-based application piece, please take a look at our last workshop-style webinar. Now this process is going to be triggered by a form submission, but as you're seeing on screen here, we have a whole host of event-based triggers. And I'll give the application three swim lanes. Now previously, in our last workshop, we built an application around existing database tables. But for now, let's just bring in our data sources on the fly. So the first thing I want to do here is just give myself some more room to work and drag my stop sign all the way to the bottom of the third swim lane. Now since our application is eForms driven, I'll start with the start task. Now we're starting from scratch here, but generally in the real world, we'll base our new applications off of the design from an existing application. And that so my application can fall under my organization's branding, I'll quickly apply some CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so now that our form falls under my organization's branding, let's add one extra column here, and we can begin designing my application. So the first thing that I'll want to do here, I'll just bring in a logo for AgilePoint, and I'll drop that on the form. Now if I go under the image configuration window, you'll see here I can give a URL for the image location, or I can attach an image to this application. Next, we'll want to start capturing some data around who's submitting this order. So I'll add a few text boxes here. This will be order submitted by, and I want to give it a default value of the user that's logged in. So to do that, I'll expand out process data and then system data. And I have a token here for the user full name, which means at runtime, we'll capture the username of the person who's logged in. I want to capture the order date, and we'll also have a default token value for that of the current date. And we'll want to give this invoice a unique number. So to do that, I'll bring in the sequence number. This will be our order number. And I'll just tell AgilePoint how I want it to behave. I'll want it to start at a value of 1, increment by 1, and give it a prefix of order. So this way, each time this application runs, we'll be able to get a unique value for that order number. So 
So next, let's bring in some dividers here, just to break up the various segments of my form. So first, we'll work on the section for customer information. Now I could have also done this with a heading control, but I feel that the raw HTML piece just looks a little nicer. And let's just drag that all the way across. Okay, so let's begin capturing some data about our customer. So to do this, we'll bring in a drop-down list where we'll pull data in from Salesforce. Now because this is a lookup to an external data source, I'll select lookup list and then configure my lookup. Now my IT department had previously created an access token, so let's go ahead and use that. And because this is a drop-down list, we're going to use the name and value pair option. In just a few moments, you'll see the multiple columns as well. Now I'll tell AgilePoint what sort of entity in Salesforce that I want to look up against. In this case, it will be a lead. And I want the customer's name to be the name and that leads unique ID as the value. Now, based on the selection that I make here in my dropdown list, I want to automatically populate some additional data about my customer. So to do that, I'm going to use an email control for email. And we'll do the same thing for phone, right? Just in case we have any troubles with their order, we want to be able to contact them. Now there is one additional field that I'll need to bring in. I'm not going to need it for my form necessarily, but I will need it for that document generation step that I mentioned earlier. Now because I don't want to see it on my form, I'm going to unselect visible. And now let's get that lookup going. So based on the selection that I make in my dropdown list, I want to populate that user's email and phone number. Now we'll use that same access token that I showed you just a moment ago. Since we're populating the email, phone, and one other field, I'll select multiple columns. We're again looking up this data against a lead here. And I'll just want to tell AgilePoint which pieces of this customer information should be shown in the respective form fields. So I want the customer's name to be displayed in the form field called display customer name. Right, again, we'll use this as a part of the document generation step. The customer's phone number in the phone field, form field called phone. And the same thing with the email. Now my next step here is telling AgilePoint which customer's information should be displayed on my form. Well, when the lead ID is equal to the value that's shown under customer name, show that user's data. And then lastly, just tell AgilePoint when I want this lookup to trigger. Now in this case here, you'll notice that I'm not specifying a particular form field, only telling AgilePoint when a related field value changes. So there's some intelligence built in here. And let's test my lookup here just to make sure that it's working okay. All right, great. So what we'll do now, we'll uh, go ahead and reuse one of my dividers that we had created earlier and just make a small modification. So the next section that we'll work on is going to be details about the order. Now to select the product that was ordered, I'll again need to do a lookup here 
but this time against SharePoint. So I'll select a lookup list, configure a new source. And again, I'll use an access token that was created previously by my IT department. Now Agile Point is populating the site structure, right? All of the sites, the lists, the libraries for this access token. So in about five or 10 seconds or so, we'll be able to make our selections. Okay, so I'll select my site. And then I have a list here called products. Now, based on the selection that I've made here, Agile Point is suggesting the appropriate name and value on my behalf, which means that all I need to do now is validate my query. And as you're seeing here, the data is coming back as I expect. So next, I need to bring in a few more fields for the details of the order. For the quantity of items purchased, I'm going to use a number box. Do the same thing for the unit price of the item purchased. And then to calculate my total, I'm going to use a formula control. Now, in this case, my formula is going to be pretty simple. I'll take the quantity times the unit price, and that's going to be my total. Okay, so we've now completed our first form here. So let's save and check this in. We'll configure our task here. You'll see here I have an SLA around the task completion. I'm just going to leave it as a, as a day, but as you can see, there are other options here. And we'll leave the process initiator as the participant for the step in the process. So now we can start building out our review step. I'll want to add a new form, but let's base it off of the layout in my previous form. So I'll select an existing form. Now optionally, I could use the bulk edit to mark certain fields read only or unenable them. But for the sake of time, let's just move on to the next step in our process here. So let's again duplicate one of the dividers that we had created before. and change the label. Now, our reviewer needs a way to indicate their approval decision. So what I'll do here is I'll just drag and drop a radio control. Under configure, I can add the options. So in this case here, I'll only have two choices. Approve and reject. Now our approver needs a way to enter some comments. So let's drag and drop a comments control underneath my radio button. And then just drag this all the way over. Now, so far there isn't much intelligence in my form, so why don't we build in a rule where if the approval decision is equal to reject, then let's set as mandatory 
that comments control. So let's test that quickly. If I leave it as approved, my comments box is not mandatory. But as soon as I select reject, you'll see that red asterisk there. Okay, so now we've completed the second step. So let's configure this here. I could change the SLA if I wanted to, but I'll just leave it at a day for now. As an option, I can assign users, groups, or roles to this, to this task. I can also assign this task dynamically based on some value that's on my form or in an external system. But for simplicity's sake, let's just go ahead and leave the process initiator as the participant for this step as well, so that when I run this, I don't need to log in and log out of different accounts. Now we've given an option for our reviewer to approve or reject, so we need to check that decision that they've made. My first rule is going to be the approved path, and the second will be the rejected path. Now I'll want to check the value that's on my form under the approval decision. So if the approval is equal to approve, move forward. If not, let's reject. Now I'm going to take this reject connector here and tie it back up to my, my initial submission step, which will give my submitter an option to revise their submission and then send again for approvals. But now we've completed all of the human tasks so let's add a few steps for document generation and to create the invoice. Okay, so this word activity here will help us create that invoice. First, I need to tell Agile Point where I want to pull the template from. So this is in a SharePoint location here, where I'll again select that same access token that we showed you just a moment ago. Okay, so let's grab my site, and then I should have a list called templates. Okay, so within this location, you'll see here that I have a document called Invoice Template. So let's take a quick look at that. As you're seeing here, I have a number of merge fields where I will insert data from the application, right, coming from my form, and then use that to create the invoice PDF. Next, let's configure where the completed invoices should be stored. So we'll again select SharePoint here. And I have a library called Invoices. So first, let's specify where this should live. I'll want to create a new folder each time an invoice is generated. And I'll want to use that unique identifier that we created as a first step in our, in our form. So the order number will be appended to the folder name. We'll do the same thing with the file name. We'll name the file that unique order ID and then we'll save it as PDF. Now you saw that there was a number of merge fields in my template, so let's load them up, and then drag and drop the corresponding fields from my form into my template. 
So the order number will go to the sequence number field. The hidden field that we created earlier will go over to our customer's name. Order submitted by will be the sub submitted by field. Order date, products, quantity, unit price, and then total. So just like that, I'm able to merge in data from my application into that template to dynamically display application data every time this workflow runs. Okay, so we've created our invoice, and as one last step here, let's just send out an email when this invoice gets approved. So to do that, I have a pre-created email template. Okay, now I can use an existing template, but let's just create one from scratch here. I will send it to the initiator of the process. So let's grab that out of system data. We'll give this a subject line here where we'll bring in data from the form again using our order number. And I'll just copy and paste the template information that I created previously. So as you're seeing here, right, I have some a table that's using data that's coming from my form. So basically to get this, I dragged and dropped from my form data here into my table. And it again will display that dynamic application data when the email gets sent out. So we've validated our application. Let's save and check it in. And now our application will be ready to publish. Okay, so if I go over to my work center, I'll see a new application ready to be used. As an option, I could have applied application level permissions to control which sets of users can access this application. And here it is. So as you're seeing here, we have my name, John Smith, as the logged in user. I'll select my customer who placed the order and their details populate here. And then lastly, I'll select the products that they've ordered. As you can see, Agile Point has given me a sum here for the order, so I'll click Submit. If I go over to my inbox here, we'll see that I have a task waiting for me to approve the invoice. So let's open up this task here. If I reject it, the comments control can, becomes mandatory. But let's just approve it. So in just another moment here, we'll see another new document created and stored within this library. And then we'll receive an email-based notification. There's my email notification.
As you can see here, it's brought in all of the application data. And in just another moment here, we'll see that invoice document created and stored here. There it is. And here's my invoice. So that concludes the demo portion for today. Let's go ahead and take a few Q&A questions. All right, great. So let's start with our Q&A. So one of the questions that I'm getting here is, what is the difference between a process-based and a form-based application? That's a great question, Matthew. Uh, the primary difference here is with respect to workflow or approval components, right? A data-driven or form-based application performs CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete, against a, a data source. Maybe that's Salesforce or SharePoint or various, da uh, various database products. Right, so yeah, that's the, that's the primary difference. You know, with a process-based application, we'll get approval steps, uh, we'll send email notifications, right, and, and things of that nature. So that's the primary difference there. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other questions at the moment. Uh, with that said, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the upcoming events that you'll see from us. Uh, so on July 11th, we'll have our regularly scheduled Getting Started with Agile Point question, uh, webinar. That's a great way to get exposed to Agile Point initially, right? learn about some of the challenges that we're solving, right? and, and the different types of use cases uh, that you might implement with our platform. And then a little later on in the month, we're going to begin a new series here that really builds on some of the steps you've seen in the past two workshop webinars. What this is going to focus on is how we can build core business applications using the Agile Point platform. Right? If you've been following the series so far, we started off with what we'll call small apps, right? which is a, another term for a form-based application. Today, we added workflow and approvals, as well as email notifications for our process-based application. And then next time around, we'll showcase a real-life quotation application example. This is something that we see across industries of, of all types, right? primarily in manufacturing and things of that nature. Right? This ability to quickly and easily spin up a quotation to your customer's specific requirements right, goes a long way to improving that customer experience. Right? In the past, generating quotations could often take days. Right? With an application like this, this is something that you can turn around in just a matter of moments. So be on the lookout for the uh, email communications for that upcoming webinar. Okay, we'll leave the line open here for another moment or so, see if any other additional questions come in. But if not, thank you so much for spending the hour with me today. You know, really appreciate the engagement and the questions. And as we mentioned, be on the lookout for the invites for our upcoming webinars. Thank you so much, everyone.